am in the Sultan Qaboos Mosque and you'd be forgiven for thinking there's only one. See, it's so beautiful. It has this, you know, very Omani touch. Let's go check out Salala and its gorgeous beaches, my absolute new favorite. This place is gorgeous. I should have come for more time, seriously. Good morning. I'm at the Muscat airport. It's about 8 a.m. and I'm heading to Salala. So Salala is famous for its greenery during the Kharif or the monsoon season. It is also the birthplace of late Sultan Qaboos who is very much loved by the entire country. And I have a little bit of a thing. Um, so in the Arabian tales, it's also famous as the city of magic because the famous magician Samri was from um, Salala. So I'm quite excited. It's a beautiful city with gorgeous beaches and there's some more to see and do. So let's go check it out now. The flight from Muscat to Salala is only an hour long, but it is scenic. I mean, you can see the desert and then the mountains meeting this ocean. It is seriously beautiful. And all these teeny tiny ribbons you see, they are actually big highways. This is my own little paradise for the next two days. Al-Balid Resort by Anantara is one of the most beautiful luxury resorts I've ever been to. If you want to find out more, I've made a separate video for it. Click the link above and it will take you there. All checked in and settled, it is time to explore Salala. Let's go. So, the museum is a small part of the Al-Balid archaeological area, which is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So I'm gonna go explore that in a bit once I'm done here. But I like the museum building, you know? See, it's so beautiful. It has this, you know, very Omani touch. Now on one side, you have the Maritime Hall where you can go and see how the dows are made and how, you know, the, the whole shipbuilding evolved throughout the years. Oman used to be a maritime empire and they were famous for their shipbuilding or dows as they're known. You can see evidence of that as far as Kenya and Lamu, Zanzibar and Tanzania, and on the other side from Pakistan to Iran. The empire stretched a long way. And on the other hand, we have the history hall, which we will go check out. There are two things that are really fascinating here. First is frankincense that gave so much power to Oman. And secondly, it is al-Falaj or the system of irrigation, which is also part of UNESCO World Heritage. Al-Balid Archaeological Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is where the ancient city of Dhofar used to be. That's how the province got its name. It was quite an important port city for the trade of frankincense. And I mean, it's really, really close to the beach and it was rediscovered in 1992. You have to stop at these shops that are right next to the road and they are selling fruits. There are a few of them that are actually a particularly special thing for Salala. This is Al Hosn Market and it doesn't look anything like a traditional souk, but this is the market of Salala. And if you want to buy some souvenirs, this is the place to come. Let's go check it out. Frankincense is mixed with different smells to create a new aroma and you can try it in different varieties if you like. 
It is far from the traditional souks that you will see in other cities like Nizva and Muscat, but it is great if you want to buy some frankincense at good price. Don't forget to bargain. May the odds ever be in your favor. Let's go check out the architectural gem of Salala now. I am in the Sultan Qaboos Mosque and you'd be forgiven for thinking there's only one. No, this is a separate mosque and this one is in Salala. It's the largest mosque in the entire province and the entire region. And I believe the second largest mosque or the third largest after Nizwa and Muscat. So since it was the hometown of the Sultan, late Sultan Qaboos, we obviously had to bring this beautiful, beautiful architectural masterpiece here. Let's go check it out, but before, make sure you are wearing decent clothes, all your shoulders, your knees, everything is covered. Women need to have like a scarf. If not, you'll have to buy one from around here. And this literally opens between 8 to 11 a.m. You can't go in other than that unless you're a Muslim and you want to go in to pray. So let's go check out this beauty. Compared to the Sultan Qaboos Mosque in Muscat, this one is rather simple but more elegant. I find this to be a lot more sort of in line with, you know, the the, the Omani feel that you sort of, you know, look around. It's, it's sort of like, you know, simple colored, you get the same feeling whether you're in the courtyard or in the grand hall. By the way, look at the chandelier. It is even grander than the one in Muscat. And don't forget to look at that beautiful handwoven carpet that was made just for this and it took ages to make. So it's a beautiful, beautiful place and I am honestly really lucky that I'm able to come here in the afternoon just before the sunset because the light has softened everything up and it looks really beautiful. Let's go do some beach hunting in Salala. It's my favorite thing to do and there's tons to explore here. So that took about 30 to 40 minutes from Salala and I am at the gorgeous Maxwell Beach and Manreef Cave. So on the way here, it's really beautiful. Like you go through this desert landscape and you see camels, which I saw quite a few of, which I'm really happy about. And it took about 35 to 45 minutes and we got here. So first we're gonna check out the cave because it's really beautiful. And apparently there's some blow up holes or geysers. So let's see if they're working. But this, I am seriously in awe of this. Look how beautiful that is. White sand beach with absolutely beautiful water. This is crazy. I knew Oman was beautiful, but this is just another level altogether, seriously. 
let's go check out the cave now. I am outside Alman Reef Cave, which is this way. And this way you have the blow up holes or the geysers. So when it's high tide and the sea is rough, you will get these massive eruptions from these geysers. And that's nice, but the sea is calm, even though I tracked the high tide and came at that time. We can still hear it. Um, it's quite, you know, like quite a rough sound. And it's not just one, you have like a few more on that side as well. I am absolutely amazed by how beautiful this place is. Salala is blessed with hundreds and hundreds of beaches like these. There's just no lack of them. There's hundreds of kilometers if you have time. Oh God. But I unfortunately have limited time. So let's go check a couple more before we get back to the city. For the next beach, we have to go through the snake road and my God, it is stunning. Remember when I showed you that little ribbon from the plane? This is that road. I'm at the stunning, stunning Faza Beach. It's written Fazaya on the maps, by the way. Look at this, it's absolutely stunning. And there's like, apart from one other car, there's literally no one here at all. So getting here is a little tricky because you need to come on through this snake road after Mogasil Beach, and it is impressive honestly it's really impressive then it turns into an off-road thing and then finally you get here it takes about an hour to do this journey and you need a good car and a good driver for this so I would don't recommend driving here on your own oh but look at this it's stunning beyond belief seriously You know, when I was coming here on the plane, I could see these, you know, little dots and those were all massive mountains. And finally, I got to be on it today. It's absolutely amazing. Don't miss this, seriously. Oh God. Let's go check out the beach a bit more. I ended up spending the rest of my day at Fazaya Beach and yes, I had the option to check one more beach, but when it's this beautiful and I could just run around on my own, I just stayed put. If you're looking for someone to take you around, this is Mana and he's been going around with me. He's really good to, like, at driving and he knows all the spots. So I'll leave his number below. If you need him, give him a call. 
time to head back to Salala. This place is gorgeous. I should have come for more time, seriously. I really regret it now. Two days is just not enough. <sighs> There's a lot more you can do in Salala. So I only went to the side that's close to the Yemeni border, but you can go to the other side, which has um, Taka Castle as well as Mirbat Valley. That's really beautiful as well as some other spots. So one of the things that I really like about Salala is the entire area around it is actually quite unexplored. You could stay here a month and discover new places, but unfortunately it's that annoying thing about shortage of time. So I'm not able to go any further or explore anymore. I guess I'll have to come another time and I would love to because Salala is so beautiful so utterly beautiful whether it is the beaches or this amazing place i'm staying in or the people or the food everything is absolutely amazing so i think salala has become like my new favorite in all of oman actually i can't wait to come back i'm gonna just relax that's all for today so see you tomorrow guys this is brown boy travels let me know what you think of the video in the comment section if i've missed something please let me know. Also, give me some suggestions about your country. I will see you in the next video. Until then, you have an amazing day ahead. Mwah.